Good evening and welcome to Christ Episcopal Church in downtown Elizabeth City, North Carolina. Our service this evening is the ser service of Tenebrae. Uh, and Tenebrae, just to give you a little bit of information about Tenebrae, the name Tenebrae comes from the Latin word for darkness or shadows. And it's been for centuries applied to the ancient monastic night and early morning services, the services of matins and lauds of the last three days of Holy Week, which in the medieval times came to be celebrated on the preceding evenings. After from the chant of the Lamentations, in which each verse is introduced by a letter of the Hebrew alphabet, a most conspicuous feature in the service is the gradual extinguishing of candles and other lights in the church until only one single candle remains. That's considered to be a symbol of our Lord. Toward the end of the service, this candle, the last candle, is hidden, uh, typifying the apparent victory of the forces of evil. At the very end, a loud noise is made, symbolizing the earthquake at the time of Jesus' resurrection, Matthew 28, 2. Then the hidden candle is restored to its place, and by its light all depart in silence. Uh, this is a reminder of the story of Holy Week, the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that which brings us together on this most sacred of weeks in the church calendar. So we'll now begin our service of Tenebrae. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. A reading from Psalm 69, verses 1 through 23. Save me, O God, for the waters have risen up to my neck. I am sinking in the deep mire, and there is no firm ground for my feet. I have come into the deep waters, and the torrent washes over me. I have grown weary with my crying. My throat is inflamed. My eyes have failed from looking for my God. Those who hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of my head. My lying foes who would destroy me are mighty. Must I then give back what I never stole? O oh God, you know my foolishness, and my faults are not hidden from you. Let not those who hope in you be put to shame through me, O oh Lord God of hosts. Let not those who seek you be disgraced because of me, O oh God of Israel. Surely for your sake have I suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also and became a bother and moan them. Those who sit at the gate murmur against me, and the drunkards make songs about me. But as for me, this is my prayer to you. At the time you have set, O Lord, in your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Save me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me, neither the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind, and your great compassion turns me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me because of my enemies which deliver, because of my enemies which surround me. You know my reproach, my shame, and my dishonor. My adversaries are all in your sight. Reproach has broken my heart, and it cannot be healed. I looked for sympathy, but there was none. For comforters, but I could find no one. They gave me gall to eat, and when I was thirsty, they gave me vinegar to drink. Let them draw back and be disgraced, who take pleasure in my misfortune. Me face, O oh God, to deliver me. O oh Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be ashamed. 
Now you shall see the crowd who will surround me. You will flee, and I will go to be offered up for you. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. You will flee, and I will go to be offered up for you. The adversary has stretched out his hand to seize all her precious things. She has seen the Gentiles invade her sanctuary, those whom you have forbidden to enter your congregation. All her people groan as they search for bread. They sell their own children for food to revive their strength. Behold, O Lord, and consider, for I am now beneath contempt. It is nothing to you, all of you who pass by. Behold and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow, which has, brought, which has been brought upon me, which the Lord inflicted on the day of his burning anger. From on high he sent fire into my bones, it descended. He spread a net for my feet and turned me back. He has left me desolate and faint all day long. My transgressions were bound into a yoke. By his hand they were fastened together. Their yoke is upon my neck. He has caused my strength to fail. The Lord has delivered me into their hands. Against whom am I able to stand up? Jerusalem, Jerusalem, return to the Lord your God. Lo, we have seen him without beauty or majesty, with no looks to attempt our, to attract our eyes. He bore our sins and grieved for us. He was wounded for our transgressions, and by his scourging we are healed. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. And by his scourging, we are healed. The kings of the earth rise up in revolt, and the princes plot together against the Lord and against his anointed. And with trembling mouth and forehead. 
my God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress? Oh my God, I have cried in the daytime, but you do not answer. I might as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted you, and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I've been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God, but I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near and there is none to help. Many young bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Asha surround me. They open wide their jaws at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I'm poured out like water, all my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My mouth is dried out like a pot shard. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You have laid me in the dust of the grave. Packs of dogs close me in, and gangs of evildoers circle around me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far away, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, my wretched body from the horns of wild bulls. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. False witnesses have risen up against me, and also those who speak malice. A reading from the 27th Psalm. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? When evildoers came upon me to eat up my flesh, it was they, my foes, and my adversaries who stumbled and Fell. Though an army should encamp against me, yet my heart shall not be afraid. And though war should rise up against me, yet I will put my trust in him. One thing have I asked of the Lord, one thing I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the fair beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple, for in the day of trouble he shall keep me safe in his shelter. He shall hide me in the secrecy of his dwelling and set me high upon a rock. Even now he lifts up my head above my enemies round about me. Therefore I will offer in his dwelling an oblation with sounds of great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hearken to my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. You speak in my heart and say, Seek my face. Your face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not your face from me, nor turn away your servant in displeasure. You have been my helper, cast me not away. Do not forsake me, O God, of my salvation. Though my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will sustain me. Show me your way, O Lord. Lead me on a level path because of mine enemies. 
Deliver me not into the hand of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen up against me, and those who speak malice. What if I had not believed that I should see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living? O tarry and await the Lord's pleasure. Be strong, and he shall comfort your heart. Wait patiently for the Lord. Before the mountains were brought forth or the land, and the earth were born, from age to age, you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, Go back, O child of earth. For a thousand years is in your sight, or, or, or like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep us away like a dream. We fade. Suddenly, like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes, in the evening it is dried up and withered. For we consume away in your displeasure. We are afraid because of your wrathful indignation. Our iniquities you have set before you, and our secret sin in the light of your countenance. When you were angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The span of our life is seventy years, perhaps the strength even eighty. Yet the sum of them is but labor and sorrow, for they pass away quick, quickly. We are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath? Who rightly fears your indignation. So teach us. Number our days. That we have may apply our hearts to wisdom. A reading from the treatise of St. Augustine the Bishop on the Psalms. Hear my prayer, God, do not hide yourself from my petition. Listen to me and answer me. I mourn in my trial and in trouble. These are the words of one disquieted in trouble and anxiety. He prays under much suffering, desiring to be delivered from evil. Let us now see under what evil he lies. And when he begins to speak, let us place ourselves beside him that by sharing in his tribulation, we may also join in his prayer. I mourn in my trials, he says, and am troubled. When does he mourn? When is he troubled, he says, in my trial? He has in mind the wicked who calls him suffering, and he calls his suffering his trial. Do not think that the evil are in the evil are in the world for no purpose, and that God makes no good use of them. Every wicked person lives either that he may be corrected or that through him the righteous may be tried and tested. Have you come out against me as a robber with sword and clubs to capture me? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But now, behold, you scourge me and lead me away to be crucified. When they had laid hands on Jesus and were holding him, he said, Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But now, behold, you scourge me and lead me away to be crucified. Would that those who now test us were converted and tried with us. Yet though they continue to try us, let us not hate them. For we do not know whether any of them will persist to the end in their evil ways. And most of the time, when you think you are having your enemy, hating your enemy, you are hating your brother without knowing it. 
Only the devil and his angels are shown to us in the Holy Scriptures as doomed to eternal fire. It is only their amendment that is hopeless, and against them we wage a hidden battle. For this battle, the apostle arms us, saying, We are not contending against flesh and blood, that is not against human beings whom we see, but against the principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. So that you may not think that demons are the rulers of heaven and earth, he says, of the darkness of this world. He says of the world, meaning the lovers of the world, meaning the ungodly and the wicked of the world, of which the gospel says, and the world knew him not. Darkness covered the whole land when Jesus had been crucified, and about the ninth hour he cried out in a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And he bowed his head and handed over his spirit. Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And he bowed his head and handed over his spirit. See the glory of the cross itself. On the brow of kings, that cross is now placed. The cross which enemies once mocked. Its power is shown in the result. He has conquered the world, not by steel, but by wood. The wood of the cross seemed a fitting object of scorn to his enemies. And standing before that wood, they wagged their heads, saying, If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. He stretched out his hands to an unbelieving and rebellious people. If one is just who lives by faith, one who does not have faith is unrighteous. Therefore, when he says unrighteousness, understand that it is unbelief. The Lord there saw unrighteousness and strife in the city and stretched out his hands to an unbelieving and rebellious people. And yet looking upon them, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. See how the righteous one perishes, and no one takes it to heart. The righteous are taken away, and no one understands. From the face of evil, the righteous one is taken away, and his memory shall be in peace. Like a sheep before its shears it is mute, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and his memory shall be in peace. Silent in his tabernacle, and his dwelling is in Zion.
who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sinning. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. For every high priest chosen from among men, is appointed to act on behalf of men in relation to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is beset with weakness. Because of this, he is bound to offer sacrifice for his own sins, as well as those of the people. I was like a trusting lamb led to the slaughter. I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living. All my enemies whispered together against me and devised evil against me, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living. One does not take the honor upon himself, but he is called by God just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not exalt himself to be made a high priest, but was appointed by him who said to him, You are my son, and this day have I begotten you. And he says also in another place, You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death. And he was heard for his godly fear. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Being designated by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. The veil of the temple was torn in two, and the earth shook. And the thief from the cross cried out, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. The rocks were split, the tombs were opened, and many bodies of the saints who slept were raised. And the earth shook, and the thief from the cross cried out, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. But when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that are to come, then though are through the greater and more perfect gift, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy place, taking not the blood of goats and calves, but his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. For if the sprinkling 
of defiled persons with the blood of goats and bulls and with the ashes of a heifer sanctifies for the purification of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Therefore, he is the mediator of a new covenant so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. When the Lord was buried, they sealed the tomb, rolling a great stone to the door of the tomb, and they stationed guards to guard him. The chief priests gathered together before Pilate and petitioned him, and they stationed guards to guard him. And God did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and he opened not his mouth. They shall mourn for him, as one mourns for an only child, for the Lord who is without sin is slain.
My flesh also shall rest in hope. You will not let your Holy One see corruption. Now the women, sitting at the tomb, made lamentation, weeping before the Lord. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. Give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. The shine of those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death. And to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Christ for us became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him, and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. favorable and 
gracious to Zion and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with the appointed sacrifices, with burnt offerings and oblations. Then they shall offer young bullocks upon your altar. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross. 